everyone. Welcome to Marie's Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. Today, you only need two things, a narrow strip of fabric and a towel, and that's it. Yes, you could add more to it, but that's all you need to make this kitchen scarf. You have something here to wipe your hands on as you are working around your kitchen. So I had a few subscribers who asked me to do a tutorial on this, so I did. And we're not going to wait around talking. We're going to get right to it. It's short and sweet, just in time for gift giving. I know you all are looking for items to gift. This is perfect for gifting. Okay, so let's go take a look at how to do this and you'll be on your way to making your own. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going to need. You're looking at it. <laughs> There's not much here, is there? Okay, you're going to need just a kitchen towel, hand towel, and a piece of fabric. Now this is a one yard cut. I have never cut it before. I have selvage to selvage edge right here meeting. Now, the first thing we're going to do is deal with our towel. And there are many different ways to fold these to make either a hanging towel or any, you know, there's different things you can do with a towel. This is just my method. I'm going to find the center of each side or each end and then I'm going to open it up and this is the wrong side showing. I just kind of loop it in in thirds. You see like that? Now that's not perfect so I'm going to have to fix it. Of course it's a little harder when I'm leaning over the camera. So what I do is I fix it until the edge of this towel is even, or the ending edge is even with this folded piece. And you might have to do it more than once, as is my case. All right. And when you have it where you want it, I want you to measure it. Now, mine measures just about five and a half inches. Okay, I'm going to put a few pins in here to hold this. Now, this is probably one of the easiest, quickest project gifts anything you could make. Seriously, and I've seen a few different ways that these are made. This is just my method. Is it you could totally choose a different method if you wanted? Okay, so remember, this is five and a half inches. I'm going to take my center pins out. So, the first thing I'm going to do is find the halfway point of this towel. So it's 26 and a half, which makes it 13 and a quarter. So I will set this on 13 and a quarter. I usually don't use this. I'm going to make a mark and use my scissors. That's how I do it when I'm not filming. <laughs> so that's just how I will do it now. Usually I cut it in half before I fold it, but I wanted to show you folding it. Now, the other thing you could do is you could take it to the sewing machine right here and just stitch about an eighth of an inch from that line on both sides. But I'm going to do it the way I normally do. Whoops. Just, just like this. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine. You want to make sure these are even here. Just 
going to get my pins exactly where I want them to be. All right. I'm going to stitch these about an eighth to a quarter of an inch from the edge just to hold these layers together. And I'm going to sew with this folded side up because if you sew with this side up, you're more likely to have one of these fetch up under your machine and kind of bend or kind of get out of place. So stitch these along. I'm going to use a 2.5 millimeter stitch length back tacking at the beginning and the end of each towel. And I'll meet you right back here. Okay, and that just took a moment as I'm sure you know. Now we're going to set these aside. The only thing you need to know is what your towel measures. And again, mine measures five and a half inches folded. And that's the number I need to remember. So here is my fabric. Again, selvage to selvage here. And because I haven't cut from this, I'm going to even it up to begin with. Normally what I do is I even this fold on a line on my ruler and then trim it that way. And I just moved. Of course I did. Not too bad, but a little bit. Okay, five and a half inches. I need double that amount. So five and a half and five and a half is 11. And then I need a half an inch, which is a quarter inch seam allowance on each side of the fabric. So five and a half times two is 11 plus a half is 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to set that there and make my cut. I lined it up at 31 and a half over here and I'm going to cut it along the 20 inch line. Normally I would flip the fabric. And if some of you are in your seats going, Marie, that fabric's going the wrong way, I am fully aware. <laughs> The problem is most of these chickens are going this way in the up down direction. But I would have had to have cut two 11 and a half inch strips this way to piece it. And personally, I didn't think it was a deal breaker because there are chickens going in the direction I need them to be for the scarf. So again, I didn't think it was a deal breaker. Okay. I am going to cut my selvages off. And I always save anything with words on them or a, a cute little print for my selvages. Now we're going to take this to the iron and I'm going to take you with me so I can show you what I do at this point. I know not everyone makes these the way I do, so I want to make sure I show you exactly how I do it, then you can make the choice from there. All right. And as usual, I have some spray sizing. Starch would work as well. I am going to heat up my iron now. All right. When I need that iron on, it's never on. <laughs> And when I leave it on, yeah, I forget about it. Okay, I'm just going to take a light spray at the very end of that. All right. And with no steam, I'm just heating that sizing. Okay, now what I'm going to do is fold this down. 
about a half an inch. You don't even need to measure. As long as it's even from side to side, you're going to be good. And the sizing just helps to have a crisp seam. You can also use your clapper on this. If you have one, I do. I don't have it right here, unfortunately. Now that I've thrown it on the floor once here, I'll pick it back up. All right, a light spray. Oops, I got a little bit more than a light spray there. We'll heat that. And again, we'll fold that in. I love this chicken fabric. Uh, one of my subscribers sent me a postcard a while back, and it had this chicken fabric in the center of it. I will say her first name is Rose. I love this chicken fabric. And then when I saw it at Marden's, I had to grab it. I was so excited to see it. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Your wrong side facing should have a fold that looks like that. Now put your right sides together like this. Match up your edges and pin or clip. And you're going to go along the whole edge like this. You're just going to pin or clip together like this. Got to straighten mine out here. This fabric doesn't want to behave as long as it's even. I was looking today at how bad my ironing board cover looks. This is really not that old. Now, I've made a few of them myself. I, I've been asked if I would do a tutorial on them, and I thought, uh, not really. You guys would probably laugh at the way I go about it. I get the job done. I have made myself ironing board covers. They're not the best looking thing. I get elastic around there and they do work. But again, they're nothing to write home about. Let's say that. Okay. Now, as long as your edges match down here and they're the same length, then that means you fold it over a half inch correctly on each edge. All right, now we're going to take it to the sewing machine. And from here, you're going to back tack and you're going to sew along this whole edge right to the other end where you back tack. You're going to use a 2.5 millimeter stitch length with a one quarter inch seam allowance. One end to the other, you're just making a tube. All right, I'll meet you at the table after that. Okay, I have sewn from one end right up to the other. I'm going to leave it wrong side out for the moment. And I'm going to open it like this so that, or I'm going to position it so that this is going up through the middle. I have my small iron plugged in only because it makes this part a little bit easier. It can be done with a full size iron and it's not going to hurt anything. But what I'm going to do is open the seam to press it flat. So all I'm doing is pressing it flat. It's just gonna help it to lay a little neater for our next step. So usually I follow it with my, my fingernail. Just give it a little heat. You could use your sizing or starch if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. I don't personally on this part because I don't find it really does much. All right, now we're going to 
pull this one end to the other. Just turn it right side out. Like this. Now we're going to take that same seam that we just had in the middle and we're going to put it in the middle again. You're just going to place it like this. See how it's running up the middle? Actually, it's not running up the middle, it's jogging. Ha ha ha. <laughs> okay, and let's give this a press. I'm going to go back to my regular iron with a bit of steam because I want my edges to be nice. Crisp is the word of the day. Notice I'm pressing, not ironing. I don't want to stretch this out of shape very much, so I'm lifting my iron. As long as you're careful, you could, you could iron it. But I'm just trying to be careful and keep everything in place. Oops. My fold came undone. Can't have that. And I don't want to leave my iron sitting next to my sizing very long either, do I? That could be a disastrous event. Okay. Now I'm going to grab the towel that I had and meet you at the table. Okay, so you have two sides. You have the side with the seam side, the seam up, and then you have the side with no seam. So that's the way I'm going to turn it. I have no seam showing. I'm going to take one of my towels and I'm going to fit it right inside. Like that. And I'm going to pin it as soon as I get it into place. Now, I want it to be, oh, I put mine in there, yeah, just about an inch. So I like a good placement up in there. That's totally up to you how far you put that in there. Make sure the back does not ripple the back piece of fabric. You want the one that's the opposite side of this to not be folded or out of place. So flip it over and just check that it's not folded. Okay, we're going to do the same thing at the other end. I'm going to take our piece of sewn towel and we're going to pop it in the little opening. So usually what I do personally is put it in there a little further than what it needs to go and then even it up. But whatever works for you is how you do it. I like to have it even as far as an inch. If I have it an inch in on one side, I want an inch on the other. And here we are, almost done. Okay, now what we're going to do is this. We're going to back tack and sew across here at about an eighth of an inch from this edge. When you get here, you're going to sew completely up to the other side at an eighth of an inch. Now, I use a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. You can use whichever you'd like to do. When you get back here, you're going to, again, go across from the edge about an eighth of an inch. And then you're going to come back up this other side until you meet your thread, your beginning stitches right here. Okay, so let's go give that a shot and then I'll be right back. And there we have our finished scarf. I used a deep red thread on the top and yellow on the 
as the bobbin thread and it probably wouldn't have mattered. I could have gone either way. And this makes a really nice gift. You could put a layer of thin batting in here if you wanted this to have a little bit more substance. You could put rickrack or lace here. You could take the scarf fabric and make an applique heart or something here on the towel before you fold it. The variations are endless. And as I always say, try to make it your own. Do something that, that you like. And this is another one that I made earlier today. I had this towel from last year and I didn't really have much fabric with this color in it except for this. And it was a kitcheny print and it, it had the color in it. So that's the one I used. And I think I might add some rickrack to this because I don't think it's a bad thing to put another layer of sewing here. So if we added rickrack or lace, we would be reinforcing that line of stitching there. So as always, I want to thank you for hanging out with me today here at Marie's Scrappy Creations. And before I forget, I need to give you the creative word of the day. So I'm going to make it easy today. It's going to be the word towel. For those of you who are new, if you use the creative word of the day in a sentence below the video, your name goes in a drawing. And once a month, I draw a name to win something that I've sewn and I gift to you. Unfortunately, because of mail costs outside the United States, the only thing I can do if you are outside of the US and you win is to send you a fabric postcard, bookmark, something that would fit inside an envelope because as I said of the fabric costs. But anyway, good luck to all of you. And if you make this, I would love to see it on the Facebook group. If you aren't already a member, please find me right on Facebook at Marie's Scrappy Creations. Same as here. I appreciate a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe to my channel so that you get notifications of new video and content. So until next time, I'm going to leave you with this. And remember, be kind out there. The world needs more of that. And I'll see you right here next time at Marie Scrappy Creations. Take care.